How's it going everybody? I hope you all have been well. It's been a while, but I'm happy to present today's highlight video. My name's Danny, and as always, welcome back to Switch Planet for a special highlight video thanks to the people over at Techland. We'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video and providing us a code to check out the already vetted Dying Light Platinum Edition, which is available in the Nintendo eShop today. The Platinum Edition contains the base Dying Light game, as well as all previously released expansions, such as the following, two alternate game modes, Bozak Cord and Hell Raid, and a ton of costumes and craftable weapons, all for the low price of $50, which is a more financially friendly way of playing Dying Light to the fullest. For those super excited for Dying Light 2, this is the perfect way to refresh your memory, or for someone like me, get immersed into the Dying Light world for the first time. With all that on the table, let's dive into Dying Light Platinum Edition and why it feels right at home on the Nintendo Switch. Dying Light has a well-known developer behind it with an even bigger catalog. Techland is responsible for developing the open world zombie title and has been responsible for other video games such as the Call of Warheads franchise and the Dead Island series. Techland does what they do best and takes a lot of what Dead Island offered 10 years ago and massively approves upon it in Dying Light. Based in Poland, Techland was officially formed in 1991, promising the push in creative boundaries and striving to make perfect video games for us, the gamers. With the pedigree of the Call of Juarez series and the breakout hit Dead Island, which is where Techland's journey into the zombie killing genre started, we can see where their most recent endeavor takes its best qualities from. Dying Light was released in 2015 and was a huge success, breaking the record for a new survival horror game and amassing a player base of over 17 million people towards the end of 2019. With the continued support through expansions, weapons, and support for multiplayer, it has finally made its way to the Nintendo Switch console to thrive. We take the reins and control Kyle Crane, a GRE operative who was dropped in Haran where the outbreak started in order to recover very important documents that could lead to some sort of cure. Although the drop in Haran isn't so pleasant for us, we begin to unravel the different factions and players that are surviving day by day in a completely different world than that of the outside. Kyle Crane, determined to complete the mission, envelops himself in the world around him and adapts to this apocalyptic zombie mess. As the story unfolds, not only do we start to make the hard decisions, but Kyle Crane begins to question who's in the right and who's in the wrong. These different factions Crane deals with are this somewhat normal band of survivors located in the tower and the ruthless militia led by Rise, who is slowly taking control of all of Haran. A big strength of the game is not only keeping us on the main path to develop the story, but encouraging side quests as well, which not only have small bits and pieces that strengthen the main storyline, but also give more context to some of the characters we come across briefly. Side quests also give us a switch up in the dark and gloomy tone to something a little more silly. Shakur didn't want visitors. Shakur shouldn't have sabotaged the fence at the fishing camp. What? What are you talking about? That wasn't Shakur, that was Gasmas Man. What the hell was that? I found Jeff. Other survivors scattered across the vast map, as well as notes, give us information to piece together what exactly happened when the outbreak first occurred, and little tidbits of everyday life in the apocalypse. With plenty of world building to search out for, and the main storyline, Dying Light provides a perfect apocalyptic scenario, and is executed very well. The mechanic that stands out, and is essentially the shining jewel of Dying Light, is the parkour feature that is key to survival. The map allows us to climb, run across, jump off to not only get to areas of the map faster, but avoid the endless hordes of zombies on the ground. For some, a brute force approach is the best way, but Dying Light lets you know that not just one person can take on the entire zombie horde, they just keep coming. Although either avenue you take will reward you with experience in that certain category, you see Dying Light has a very meticulous skill tree that is split up into three parts. Minus the legendary skill tree, which was added later when the following expansion was released. The skill tree contains agility, which primarily focuses on different techniques that could be used like vaulting over infected, shoving your foot in their face, 
but as well as overall stamina and how long you're able to run without getting tired. There's power, which allows you to spec into heavier swings, new craftable items, but also giving you the opportunity to do more damage with weapons. The third and most important tree is the survivor skill tree, which allows you to unlock more ways to craft equipment, carry more weapons, and efficiently do a certain task like repairing weapons or crafting consumables. All of these respective trees are leveled up how you would assume each one is gained. Agility experience is gained by free running, parkour challenges, and anything really active. Power is of course earned by smashing zombies heads in, utilizing traps, and doing challenges of the same respective name. Survivor experience is given when doing missions, turning in drops you may find in the world to the quartermaster in the tower, and rescuing other survivors. The survivor rank, however, is probably the most important and valuable since it opens up what you can craft in the game as well as gaining more traps to use. It's also the easiest to lose because of this particular zombie, which I'll get into later. Guns are present in the game, but it definitely won't be your most used tool as they are crazy expensive and ammo is hard to come by. Usually anything blunt will work and there are tons scattered across the map, all with their respective damage outputs and durability. Yet don't get too comfortable with a certain melee weapon, since repairing is limited on each one, and as you progress the story, the zombies get even harder to kill. Scattered around the map are supplies to aid you in repairing and crafting that can be found in containers, closets, and locked boxes that usually need to be lockpicked. The stores provide a decent amount of weapons and crafting materials and change frequently throughout the game, encouraging the player to continuously check all shops before a run. Crafting is pretty easy to master and you can create newer and stronger weapons with different elemental mods or mods that boost damage on a weapon or durability. All of this can be found at random across Haran or in shops. There are all kinds of zombies scattered across Haran and not just your basic bumbling walkers. There's the of course aforementioned dumb zombie, really annoying and still pretty terrible in groups. There's the virals which are a little tougher but run and usually travel in twos or threes and can follow you on rooftops, so be careful. There's goons, which are really tough to kill, but very, very slow, and they generally carry a huge rebar that will decimate you. Toads are toxic spitters, which can slowly deplete your health if hit, and they're also bombers. <laughs> which every time I see when I get scared, swing, and then immediately die. Yet these types are only the zombies you come across during the day. At night are night hunters, which are really fast and super mean. Of course, there are a lot more types of zombies throughout the game, but some should be left as a surprise for you. I would be doing a disservice if I didn't mention the additional content that can be played other than the base game, including the Hell Raid game mode. This is separated from the continuity of the game and acts as a game within a game. It's a dungeon crawling first person RPG with new twists on the infected and new items and weapons that make it a really fun time. It is very heavy in the fantasy aspect and it's great. Bozak Horde is a fast paced challenge expansion. Be the Vampire allows you or another to be the Night Hunter, which can happen during the night phase of your playthrough, which is terrifying, but it's very fun PvP. A sort of prequel expansion following Kyle Crane before the events of Haran, and of course, the supported multiplayer that you can play with your friends. With the base game on top of all the additions, Dying Light has a buffet of things to do. With such a big game, the fear of rendering and overall performance comes to mind. This is true for a lot of open world titles. Although Dying Light is a port, on the Nintendo Switch it didn't bother me one bit and it still looks pretty good, taking full advantage of the hardware as best as it can. Rendering through the areas is seamless and not even noticeable at times, especially when going at fast speeds across the rooftops, and I did not feel a single dip in the frame rate even when being overwhelmed by tons of zombies. For the Nintendo Switch, Dying Light still is a shiny toy for those who haven't experienced it, and it looks pretty good. I played on a Nintendo Switch Pro controller on a big screen TV, and it was all very great. In handheld mode, I didn't see any dip in quality. The game still functions properly, even with the Joy-Cons. Although it is a port, it is a fantastic example of what can be achieved by a certain developer, no matter what the console. Dying Light is the perfect title to pick up for open world players and zombie players alike. 
There's so much packed into this title, especially with all the quality of life improvements, expansions, and content that Dying Light has done over the years. This is a complete game, and was a ton of fun to play through for the first time. Whether it be the main story, combat, or even all the different side quests, it has definitely got me excited for the second installment. Again, we'd like to thank Techland for sponsoring this video and providing Switch Planet a code to experience the game, and of course we'd like to thank all of you for all the continued support. We hope to see you guys in the next video, and if you haven't already, please consider giving us a like or comment, tell us what you think about Dying Light, or the video. Make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time here on Switch Planet. Okay everyone, thanks so much for watching. If you liked that video, please leave a like and subscribe, and ring the bell if you want to get notified when we release new content. We hope to see you in the next video.